In 1937, a German mathematician called Lothar Kollatz made a discovery. If you take a whole number, and if it's even, divide it by 2, and if it's odd, multiply it by 3 and add 1, and you keep on doing that to each new number that you get, eventually you'll get back to the number 1. And Kollatz tried this for many different numbers, and it always worked. You always got back to the number 1. And so he suggested that this is always true. Whatever the number, however big or small, if you follow the process that he described, it will always return you to the number 1. And it's called the Kollatz conjecture. The question is, is it true? Now, remember the rule. If a number's even, you divide it by 2, and if it's odd, you multiply by 3 and add 1. So let's say we start with the number 20. Well, obviously that's even, so we divide by 2, which gives us 10. That's even. So divide by 2 again, that gives us 5, which is odd. So now we have to multiply by 3 and add 1. So then we end up with 16, and then 8, 4, 2, and 1. Let's say we start with 17, and then the sequence is going to run 17, 52, 26, 13, 40, 20, 10, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. The number of steps needed to get to 1 is called the total stopping time, and it can vary widely. For instance, if you start with the number 27, it takes 111 steps, during which time the highest value reached is 9,232 before eventually the sequence reaches 1. But however many steps it takes, Collatz conjectured, 1 will always be the end point. Well, needless to say, mathematicians have tried to find an exception, but so far they've drawn a blank. It's a simple matter to program a computer to keep checking successively bigger numbers until it runs out of time or, or its owner runs out of patience. Mathematicians have applied this brute force approach and shown that there are no violations of the Collatz conjecture out to a value of 87 times 2 to the 60. But that doesn't really signify anything. The next biggest number that hasn't been checked might be the one that breaks the mold, that leads to a sequence that blows up to infinity or gets stuck in an endlessly repeating loop. It wouldn't be the first conjecture that's been shown to fail at enormously large values. In 1919, the Hungarian mathematician George Polya suggested that more than half of the positive whole numbers less than any given number have an odd number of prime factors. But in 1958, the English mathematician uh, Brian Hazelgrove proved beyond doubt that Polya's conjecture wasn't true, although he couldn't give any specific value that demonstrated this. The first explicit counterexample, 906,180,359, was announced by the American mathematician Sherman Lehman in 1960. Twenty years later, the smallest counterexample, just a tad less than Lehman's number at 906,150,257, was found by the Japanese mathematician Minoru Tanaka, and in fact, it's now known that Poya's conjecture fails for the majority of numbers between 906,150,257 and 906,488,079. Merton's conjecture is named after the Polish mathematician Franz Merton's, but was first suggested by the Dutchman Thomas Stieltjes in 1885. If it had turned out to be true, it would have rocked the mathematical world, because it would have implied the truth of the Riemann hypothesis, the greatest unsolved problem in maths. However, exactly a century after it was proposed, it was disproved. Shortly thereafter, it was shown that it must fail for some value between 10 to the 14 and 10 to the 1.39 times 10 to the 64, although no specific counterexample has yet been found. In any event, the experiences with Pullier's and Merton's conjectures warn us against any complacency 
that the Colitz conjecture must be true just because it stood the test of time so far. The beauty and mystery of what Colat suggested is that anyone, even a child as young as eight or nine, can grasp what it's about. It's no exaggeration to say that it's the easiest to understand open problem in all of maths, having the appearance almost of a party trick. But the fact that it's remained unsolved since its discovery in Victorian times is a measure of its true depth. It relates not just to number theory, but to issues of decidability, chaos, and the very foundations of mathematics and computation. Paul Erdos said of it, Mathematics is not yet ready for such problems. Mm -hmm.